Now, I've, because I'm going to be using quite a lot of pastel, what I'm going to do is to, to go redo these lines that I've just put in with 175. And now the reason I'm doing that is because when I start filling colour in here, I'm going to lose the lines that I've got now because they're going to be very tonally the same. So to stop that from happening, I'm going in with a stronger colour. And it does look a bit weird because it's quite a strong colour I'm putting on there. And if you look at the original picture, you'll see that it's nowhere near the strength. But I know from experience that if I don't do this now, I'll start losing the lines and then you're in a real pickle when that happens. So by, by going over the edge of the lines, you can see clearly where you intend to be. Just a little bit more in there, although that's a different colour and I'll be careful, be careful Colin. There we are. Now that's more or less picking up, or just sort of deepen that. I can do that because that's going to be quite dark in there. Right. Okay. Now we can now put this colour on, which is 273. That can go on just as we've done it before. There's a little bit less up there because that's ivory in there. But this is a general colour that will go on all over. I'll just speed it up a bit. We have to do this because it's compatible with the rest of it. Even though this is more ochre it's going to have to have the same treatment. And now the next colour I'm going to put on is 182. And that will give us the ochre look. Combining 273 and 182 together. As you know by now, that works very well. You see what I mean by the lines now? Those lines would have been very much obscured. Some of them already are, even though that went into a darker colour. Okay. Good. But we can still see them, that's the important thing. Now I'm going to add some... 283 to this area. This is continuing the idea of that ready brown that's dropping down. And it comes down right down to there. More shading in there. What I'm trying to do is trying to retain a little bit of light there if I can. I'm using ivory just to bring it back. Okay. <clears throat> and then, where was I? Oh yes, over here. It really, once it gets to there, it fades a bit and it turns into more ochre. Now this area here is this bit one over here, but it's obviously it's on the side, so it doesn't look quite the same. Now, I'm not quite sure how that is meant to be, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little bit of artistic license and do what I think without making it too obvious. You see, you could look at that and think, oh, that's an eye there, but it, it actually isn't. Okay, now where's my 177? back behind here just to deepen that up a bit more. A bit of one double seven here. I've got to make that look less like an eye if I can. So I may have to treat it. That's it better. That's better Colin. A bit of artistic license coming in there. Okay. Now we need some more ochre in there so I'm going to push a little bit more of the 182 in because it's, it is more ochre than it is grey. 
and then we're going to blend it. This is the first time I've used the colour shaper on this section. You've got to do it at the right time. Uh, when's the right time, Colin? Well, it's when you feel it's the right time. And, um, it's not set in stone by any search of the imagination. You can change it as you go along if need be. It's when you feel that you need to have the base colour, which this is of course, smooth down. And you see the difference it makes from side to side. Long way to go. But before we really commit ourselves to the darker colours, you, you need to have this set in. Now by now, all those little lines that I put in would have gone if I hadn't already darkened them. So, the next job is to darken them. Now what I'm going to do now, because this is... Um, more ochre I'm going to change from 175 to 177. But when I look at it now I think these, certainly this area needs to be more brown-ish. Now this is the eye area there. This is the very tricky area. I think the eye is just where well, I'm putting it there, and this is like shadow that's coming around. Gosh, this is hard. Now, just there, on top of there, we have just like a protrusion of the eye, or the, the area above the eye coming out. So I'm just going to put a little drop of white on there. Can you see how that works? It just pushes the top out. Now, that works so well that while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do the other side. This is the other eye. And we've got the same sort of idea. I'm not really drawing an eye at all. I'm drawing the eye socket. And we do the same thing again. The eye. And to make that look even more spectacular, what we do is we come round with the colour that we used on the other side of that, which was 283 and make it look as though you've got a little bit there. I hope that's worked. Yes, it does. Good. Coming down here on the other side. And we will just put just a little touch of colour on there as well. Like that. Okay. Now, so now basically we've got the eye. Now that's good news. But what we want to do now is to darken this colour off. Now I'm going to, I'm going to have to follow my original rule here by putting 175 in. However, I still feel that that really is more brown than it is the sepia greyish colour. So what we do in a situation like this, when you can't make your mind up, you put both on. And this one is 177. So I put 177 and 175. The reason I did that is because I couldn't make my mind up which of those two colours would be better for it. Now, do you remember I said that we, it had a greeny look when I was showing you, sir, right at the beginning of the picture? Well, just, just tidy this up a little bit here, because the horn needs to have a, a light tip to it. And what you do to make sure it stands away as you darken behind it very slightly. First with 283 and then 177. That's now. Okay. So you, you, yes, you put two, both colours on. Now, do I like that? Yes, I think I do. So what I do is I shall do the same thing elsewhere. Let's follow it down. I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that's finished. There's still a long way to go. A bit of depth there, a bit of depth there. Try to match both eyes. And creasing going on. Okay. 
I remember when I did the elephant, I thought, gosh, this is a difficult picture. And it was a very difficult picture to do. But it worked out in the end to be a very successful one. I sold an awful lot of prints from it. And, and of course the pack is popular too. So it's worth the effort that's involved because you know that if you're struggling, then it's going to look good at the end of the day. At least, I hope it will. And that's really what this is all about. Now, I don't want to make that horn any darker there than that. So what I think I'll do is smooth it down because it's very important that we don't have that texture on the horn. I don't mind the texture on the skin, but I don't want it on the horn. I don't want it to be a smoother look. It's, oh, I, know, I can't show you the original at the moment, the colour is very, very close to the colour of that original. Now we have a light and dark problem here, so I'm going to put just a little bit of white down in here because I want it to show up against that. Now this has got to show up more than it does. I've got the choice, I can either lighten, in fact I can try it both ways, I can using the ivory pencil, I can just run the ivory pencil up there to give me, that actually does work quite well, and that comes down to there, blend it out slightly so that it doesn't just it's not just a line and the same thing can apply down on this one here and blend it out again this is new techniques every picture you do you have a new technique to it and this is a very good one now just to make it doubly sure that we can see it well we used one double seven which is the color i used on top of the 283 and make sure that we have that standing out. Now, now that really now must go flick forward to you. Very, very important, these little things that we do. That's it, a little tip on there, and then down here, this side. When's a line not a line? Do you know the rule? When it becomes a shaded to you very carefully shade that out. But you're left with the fantastic effect there. And that's quite quite strong up there. So what are we gonna do here? Struggling a little bit here folks. Try struggling to get the right kind of effect and that actually drops around there. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. It's all a matter of... But I wanted to show you these things. I mean, I could have done them off camera, but you wouldn't have appreciated that much. But I like that. The way I've done that is it's great. Now we need to make that just a touch darker on the edge of the, on the, edge of the horn here. So I'll make it dark, lighter and darker. Lighter with my ivory, which we're using, and darker with that 175 I used just a second ago and darken it like that. I'm going to also add another colour in there. I've, I think the, I, the ochre, which we haven't really used yet, a little bit of ochre in there would be nice. And we can put some ochre in the horn too. Now that's very nice. Now you can see why this takes a lot of time up and it really is worth the effort involved. Make that a little stronger. Love it. Okay, now I'll, I'll you've, I've shown you an awful lot there, but I want, really did want to show you that. But I'll, I'll just move do exactly what you've seen me do before around here and bring you in when I'm a little closer to 
getting this area complete. Now when you reach this level here, this is when you want to give up. Because you think, what do I do now? I've got to darken it, I've got to lighten it. Let me show you how to go on about it. First of all, these jolly old um, lines again. Now is the time to deepen them still further. Because you're going to lose them in the next operation, if not. Quite dark now. The other thing, this is where it's scary. You've got to darken using the side of the point of the pencil. You've got to darken, and this is where, as I said, it's pretty scary. You've got to make it a lot darker. And I'm just using um, the 175 and also the 177. Now you just watch the next operation. And after, after this I've got to put oak in as well. You've got to have all these colours over there. Now what have I said so many times before? You work from light to dark. So when you put light back on, you end up with mud. Here comes mud. I'm going to use a very sharp 270. What this will do will lighten up those areas I want lightened, which is here, and it also gives me an opportunity of just picking out some of those creases, the lighter parts of the creases. I did show you this before actually, but you can see it here again, not just with that colour, but also with a little bit of ochre as well. This is 183. So you put the lighter colour. We can bear in mind we can always go back with the darker colours if we have to at a later date. A little bit of ochre. That's nice. You can always put just a touch of white on as well. If you want something like there, I want that to be even lighter. Just on top. As long as you put that on, this will work. And a little bit more. But you see that the look at the difference between that there and there. Okay, so over here we do the same thing again. Light on top of dark. But it's not really dark, it's not solid, is it? Leaving, going in between, you see, those um, lines for the moment. And gradually we will whittle even those back. And you, you've got almost an impossible task here. Yeah? Still work on that horn a little bit, I've just seen. And that's probably the light done. Now what do we do about all this lot? Well we can use we can use the blender or we can use this again, but this time much lighter. Now this time I'm going in with quite a light touch, with a view not to lighten the colour, but to blend it. But blending with 70. Now that looks quite nice to me. And, uh, it's, looking, it's looking quite good. I don't know whether I want to do too much more. Let's blend that off a little. Once again bringing in the ochre. Did I say this was hard folks? Is. Now, you see that horn? The horn itself is just a bone, obviously, and it's, it's not f as flesh as such. So what we've got to try to do is to make it look like a horn. How do you do that, Cole? Well, what you do, you fiddle. You fiddle about until you get something that resembles it. Now, what I'm doing here is I can put in a little bit of... This is 177 I'm using. It's working so well, I'm going to do it over here as well. You've got to make sure that you keep the light in. Yeah, strayed a little bit there. Right. Now you can do the same thing that I've just done down here with the ivory. Now, 
here if I want it to I push hard that gives me my lighter edge okay but if I want it as a blender I can now use it in a slightly different way and use it as a blender now, I've always got to settle for the next best thing here once I get to a point where I think I can't improve this anymore that's when I stop but I think we can do it with a little bit more colour in here as well Ooh, I do like this this is lovely and we can do I probably need once I finish filming here I shall do a little bit of titivation myself because though I'm doing the bulk of it for you touches I would need to put in afterwards but you don't miss anything I'm just basically doing what I'm doing here now just to, to show you but you can see how that's effectively going to work hmm. yes like it a little bit of light I think maybe a little bit of white going down over here now this is where I, what I want to do now is I want to subdue a few of those little creases. And all you do is just touch them in with a with a blender, and it just subdues it a bit more. That's it. And in certain places, you can ex not with that with a one seven five. Certain places where the the reach is strongest, you can just go in a little stronger, but not all over. It's just in spots like there and there's another one there and this this idea of doing little smaller sections means it looks more attractive and just um, bring that down in here I'm going to you because this is very deep in here I'm just going to use a touch of black in there just to pinpoint that nostril a little more. There we are look. Bad does it? Oh well I'm going to put it a little bit of green on there. I'm actually going to choose to use 167. I don't know why I, I just kind of like the idea of it just having a little bit of colour. I hope that shows up on the screen. It, uh, it certainly looks good on camera and colours like a little bit of red now these are colours that aren't on the original but I just felt that I wanted to put just a little bit of richness into it so a little bit of red this is 192 I'm using I love that horn there I think that is spectacular a little bit of oak a little bit of oak I think now just just in, in spots and I think I may well leave it then I might well leave that alone just a small touches that I need need to do clarify there is. Now I'm happy with that. I'm certainly not going to improve it anymore. So now that's the bulk of it done. Now we've got the area down here to worry about. Now down here, this is the similar. Let me just have a look at the original picture for a moment. You see, this is very dark. And I'm going to follow that. This will of course set this section alight. So we need to put that in, but we need to go in mostly that's going to be the darker grey rather than the lighter grey. I should put a little bit of light on on those. Um, but I'm when I get down to the feet, you see I haven't got any feet here. So that's going to be actually um, in the dust. And I'll show you how that, when, when we get to it, I'll show you how I prepare the ground. <laughs> Literally. Sorry, all these puns I keep coming up with. Okay, so that's, uh, so far, so good.
Now we've just got the legs and lower half of the body to do.